Welcome back to MSI 2022, where I wanted to break down some of Xiaohu's early game movement in neighborhood tactics presented by State Farm. So the one thing that I want to highlight here is something we've talked about a little bit so far, and we can roll the clip. Essentially, when RNG will make a proactive play on one side of the map, we'll often see Xiaohu shadow the other side to prevent cross-map plays. So for context in this clip, we have Red Canids who have the advantage with having Herald. And if we look towards the minimap, we can see that Xiaohu initially started to move down towards the boss side of the map, but then critically, we saw the enemy bot lane back away. He knows he's no longer needed, so he can move back up towards mid lane. They know Garlet is gonna be able to take some plates. Critically, Red Canids are fine with this because they can start to aggress on the top side and use the Herald to try and trade favorably in return. So critically, what we see is movement upward coming from Xiaohu if the arrow will draw, and he's going there to cover. So we can see the outcome of this play. The tower's getting low, they're looking to secure it, and they're even bringing, bringing the Vex up. Critically, we see Bin try and trade aggressively to deny the Herald, and then Xiaohu turns up, and this is enough to uh, ward them away from continuing the play, and ultimately, they're not able to take that tower. And considering they committed the Herald to do this, and they don't get the tower, this is super significant. And then on the other side of the map, what we start to see is that Gala, left alone, left isolated, is able to pick up first tower for himself. This is something very typical for Xiaohu, where he will look to cover on the other side when he knows his team don't need him to play on their strong side of the map. So really heads up play from him, and a big reason why RNG are so strong at playing the map. I mean, fantastic breakdown, Orcs. I think when we were going into this game, um, I was very pushy and saying, get me a clip. Let, show me how Xiaohu can play, you know, in Bin and Wei's lane um, better than they can play. Uh, and we managed to find a great example. This was a game that was slow and controlled. And just before we continue with the breakdown, I do want to remind everybody of the Group B situation because following extensive technical evaluation of the competitive and training environments during the first three days of the 2022 Mid-Season Invitational, League Ops discovered uh, following day three that there had been a discrepancy in the latency being reported in game logs for all matches versus what was being experienced in the Busan venue. So as a result, League Ops determined it was the best interest of competitive integrity to replay all three of these matches. Now, these replayed games will be finished with all of the other group stage competition by the end of the weekend, on Sunday, May 15th. Those replacement games will be held beginning tomorrow. And there'll be more information on lolesports.com. It has been several hours since we updated everybody on that one. And I just wanted to make sure any new viewers who have just joined us have heard the results and heard why. When we do look at the standings, you'll see that RNG are currently two and zero because of course of the reasons just explained. To bring us back to this game, relatively controlled, relatively slow paced, so to speak, but by the time we hit 15 minutes, RNG had like a 4,000 gold lead. And I really want to highlight on this post game breakdown wow. graphic, that is a 21 minute timeline. And look at that mountain, look at that gold escalation, Rez. It really tells a story. CS, farm, towers, just like Orcs highlighted, Gala picking up all his plates and all that gold for himself. Exactly, like kind of what he highlighted in Shahu kind of stopping the play from happening. So when it was uh, Red Cannon's turn, they didn't get too much. But when, when it was RNG's turn, they were setting up plays specifically throughout mid lane, Chitan getting uh, kicked in the face by Lee Sin, and so he <laughs> ended up dying. And then when the turret mid fell, they knew they can commit further to fights. When RNG knows that Ren Cannons are making mistakes, they maximize the goal. They, they, they understand completely when to commit, while when Red Cannons uh, are in the driver's seat, they tend to play defensively, uh, RNG does. So it's yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, and I think this this game really illustrates the kind of transformation we saw of RNG into playoffs, because in the regular season, Xiaohu is much more for carry. And a lot of people who saw him last year in the top lane will thought, you know, the team played for Xiaohu, but yeah. he's been so much more facilitated for his team. We saw it in his Galio game. We saw it here. And if he can get Gala ahead, if he can defend Bin and stop the enemy team aggressing on him, he knows he has trust in his carries. I mean, Gala just did, he showed why. Just before we jump to that, um, Ox, you inspired me. Galio performance, Xiaohu performance. How many games has Xiaohu played in Galio this year? Uh, five. How many wins does he have in Galio this year? Uh, also five. Fantastic, it's 100% win ratio. I do want to build Quick on stats. Gala though, because after your replay where you showed the gold, the tower being secured, um, Gala was um, frustrated that his first pentakill was no longer cannon, and as such, 
did it again. Sure, why not? This time on Kaisa, I mean, talk me through this replay, talk me through this pentacle once again. Phenomenal from Garland Orange. Yeah, and I, I said this earlier today, but it just feels like, particularly the Kaisa is such a signature pick, but these mobile picks reposition into the other side, constantly playing on the edge of the fight. And notice, I don't think there's been a single moment where Gala hasn't been attacking someone. Yep. He is constantly dishing out damage right on the edge, and no one managed to get on top of him, but he's constantly putting in the work. Yeah, and even though he had to recast his role, <laughs> get right into the Kaisa <laughs> pick, like, why not, right? <laughs> Maybe get it, even looks even better, honestly, on the Kaisa pick, where he kind of started to be known as the team fighting AD carry. I mean, such a fantastic performance, such a fantastic win from RNG. And I do want to now turn our attention to the rest of the group because it is our featured matchup of the day presented by Mercedes-Benz. A red cannon's taking on the fast pay Wildcats. And this game is m monumentally important. As we still the presume... TCL and CBLOL, this MSI is a chance of redemption and to advance from the opening stage. But only one will survive after the last day of Group B. We saw a bloodbath the last time these two teams met, with neither team wanting to give an inch. Starscreen TP's in. Is he going to try and help out his team? It's a one for one. Quigo goes in. Holy Phoenix goes golden as he tries to keep himself alive, but he gets sniped down from the curtain call. After a disappointing start, the Wildcats have come out swinging, managing to take a game off the dominant looking Red Cannons. You're in a little bit of a trouble here, Starscreen. You're going to come back out into the real world, but just before he does, everyone piles in. Red are back for revenge and ready to dig deep to show that the CB LOL will not fall twice against the TCL. This featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz is a race for second place in Group B and promises to be another bloodbath between two teams fighting to stay alive. Yeah, uh, hey, Trevor, little little tip for you. When uh, they show those videos, you're not supposed to talk. Why do we invite the children? Like, what is, what nonsense is this? <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being BM by the rookies. <laughs> the rookies? The boomer doesn't understand. I wish you guys could have heard what Kevin was saying in my ears. It was way less polite than that. Nevertheless, our featured matchup <laughs> for the day, it is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The Red Canids versus the Fast Pay Wildcats. Turkey versus Brazil. You could say there's a bit of a regional rivalry between these two teams, uh, these two regions, both myself and Yinsu do say so. And it is good for all of us to speculate what this means for the players. But uh, don't you wish there could be some way that perhaps you could hear from the players themselves? I'm not going to talk now. Good job. Yeah, so you're go. in luck. Uh, Yinsu actually spoke to Holy Phoenix himself. Check it out. Oh, I stopped talking. Thank you very much, Trevor. I'm now joined by Holy Phoenix. Hi, Holy Phoenix. Welcome back to MSI. Last time you played MSI, you guys weren't able to quite overcome the Brazilian teams, but today you have gotten your revenge. Um, how great does it feel to be able to beat them in this rivalry? <laughs> Our, our revenge is not over yet. Until we 2-0 them, we will just keep tryharding. But this win feels good. Uh, it, of course, it wasn't an easy game, but winning versus Brazil is a really big thing for Turkey. And this is our first match. Second is on the way. Well, second is on the way. It's just about to start. As a quick reminder, exactly how the Wildcats we're able to pick up that victory. I do have a replay of that big team fight. Raz, I'm gonna come to you first because the game was very close and yes. it was back and forth, kind of reminiscent of what we were seeing a little bit earlier between PSG and Wildcats. However, in that game, it was Wildcats losing yeah. their fight that cost them the game. Here against the Canids, they managed to win it. Yeah, it, it was really painful for uh, Wildcats. It's getting closer and closer and better in a lot of these games. This was the one you're right, that they ended up taking a win on. And even though there was a critique on uh, Holy Phoenix's team fighting. This is a great example where Holy, Fe Holy Phoenix specifically had great positioning in these fights, and it was Starscreen's Mordekaiser that started to rip through Red Kent. I'm glad you mentioned Mordekaiser because it was such a fantastic heads up pick into the Camille Galio, which it feels like an uncountable combo, but taking the Camille away, ensuring that they aren't able to layer that lockdown yes. worked so well in those fights. Yeah, where, 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 where? Taking down Brazil with their <laughs> specific pick. Um, update in terms of the standings and what this does mean. This is do or die for fast pay Wildcats. If they lose this game, the Wildcats will be eliminated from the Rumble stage. So it's a very difficult scenario to be in, but the fact that they lost that game to PSG Talent just a little bit earlier puts them in that scenario. But Reds, 
that was a close game. That was a game, you know, Wildcats, when we look back, they were able to, you know, pick up the win. They should have won that game against PSG. What do you yes. think their mentality is right now? Here's the thing. It's so easy to get down on yourselves when you are finding losses after losses. You have to start making tweaks because there's a lot of good in that game. The tweaks that are required is, hey, when you make a mistake on, the, on one side of the map, in this case, Sinzel getting caught out on the bottom side, right? And you, I guess you're able to make an equal pick yourselves. Don't, like make a hard reactive play. The Baron play that they made was yeah. unneeded. They still had a decent gold advantage Quick and they make the mistake. Quick final thoughts here from Orgs, as of course the Canids on the other hand, they have to bounce back from that devastating loss to RNG and the fact they gave up another pentakill. Yeah, I still have faith in the Canids. I think they've been really smart on the map. It, I've said time and time again, the execution has been the only thing that lacked and I hope they come out with a good result here. Well, we're gonna have to find out. Yinsu, will CB LOL eliminate your beloved TCL? We'll find out in a moment. Patience time and Mark, take it into the cast. Thank you, Trevor, as uh, it is do or die time. As you heard there, four losses in groups A and B at least, obviously it's a bit different for group C, uh, is definitely the spot you don't want to be at. So it is uh, all or nothing here for the Fastway Wildcats. Yeah, uh, I think it's very important obviously for them to stay alive, but I think the other angle as you heard them talking about, the rivalry between the two uh, regions, very still heated. You heard that the players are getting a lot of Stuff thrown in them for losing. I know Farfetch is probably not want to open his DMs anytime soon. Um, I hope people are going to be respectful, but at the very least, you can tell that the two communities do care a lot about, you know, okay, not going to take down RNG. There was an opportunity at the beginning when PSG dropped that game to red to be like, whoa, can one of these teams get out? Since then, PSG has um, kind of answered back yep. as you would have expected heading into the tournament. And now it's the grudge match. Certainly is. See how it shakes out here. I'm expecting Holy Phoenix focus in the first phase of picks that has been the go-to for actually everyone, starting off somewhat surprisingly with RNG, but uh, whether everyone did the same homework or someone is just like, hey, that's a good idea. Uh, Holy Phoenix has been pushed back as far as picks go. Still been quite effective, but he's gonna lose Callisto, he's gonna lose Samira, probably gonna lose one more here as well as Wukong Ari are the two bands there. Wukong Ari taken out. Just one final note on the uh, rivalry between the two. TCL has the heads up in the matchup, nine to six in their Ooh. favor. And they also grabbed the first one of the tournament. Yes. So not only does a win, you know, need to keep them alive at the tournament, it'll also give them the 2-0 over Brazil, as well as continue to advance the history in their favor. It's been quite a ride actually in this group, you know? Red Kin is coming out swinging against PSG Talon. Thought they were maybe even favored to, to take the game of Wildcats. Then all of a sudden we're looking at second. And then PSG Talon's coming up and RNG is playing 10,000 games and it's all happening. Yeah. As uh, Kaisa continuing the trend, they're going to ban away another AD from Holy Phoenix. Yeah, man, you can just tell. It, it, it's like one of those things that feels good and bad at the same time. It'd be like, yeah, they put respect in my name. They're banning me out all the time. But also, God, I would love to play some of these champs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not going to get to play Lucian either. Have to respect that one on the red side. Taken away from Titan. So makes sense. I mean, Lucian's very strong. Kind of these three champions on the red side are starting to become the potential, you know, commonplace bans, at least in this stage of the tournament. That does leave Gwen open. That does mean Gwen gets picked. Uh, did have it last game there for Google. Let's yeah, see how it goes. Gwen's in this been game. rising in priority a little bit. It feels like it's it's always interesting to track the trends that are going on over the course of the event. Uh, like you said, the Lucian is absolutely terrifying in terms of permanent uh, full presence champions. It's Ari and Lucian only. Yep. Kind of falling more and more into the ban side. Ari gets through a little bit more. Lucian only got through four times, banned 17 of other games. So people know how strong he is. I think going forward, no one's going to get him. We've seen too many times now when you just pair that up with the Nami. It's, yeah. it's too disgusting. Yeah, Gala played it. We're like, okay, it's 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 off. We're done. Lucian's off the menu. No more Lucian for anyone. <laughs> Funny enough, Gala's the one who gets it. You yeah, know? I was <laughs> like, what? But then, I don't know. Sometimes you got to test the limits, and uh, then you realize why you don't do that. As Trindamir and Jin, interestingly, going to get picked up here. So already a different look at attacking this Gwen. We're going to see a lot of this, right? Gwen's going to be a, probably a very hot blind pick or first pick on the blue side. So teams are going to have all their different Jin ans uh, Gwen answers prepared. So very interesting. Haven't seen a ton of Trindamir this tournament thus far. Was very prevalent in spring, then kind of seemed like he fell off the face of the earth with some of the nerfs that came through. Itemization changes as well. He was one of those people who was actually incredible at abusing Hullbreaker. It got nerfed and kind of like changed again. Uh, but Starscream mostly played tanks and weak side for uh, the Wildcats. He was seven Gragas games, four Orn games, three Malphite games. It was the Trinomir was the one carry that he tended to get a lot of games on. He had four games of Trinomir. So if he is going to be focused a little bit more, it's, it's often going to be something like this. Zeri also 
going to be back as well, which uh, was an option potentially for Holy Phoenix, but has the Jin here instead. Titan will happily take this alongside the Leona. And then uh, obviously with all this AD, I'm kind of curious what's happening with mid and potentially jungle. There aren't that many AP junglers. We've seen Evelyn, we've seen Diana. It doesn't have to pick one for Ferret. Obviously, Don't Saren can make Nautilus. up for... Give it to us. Nautilus again? <sighs> Alistair. You just want the stats to keep. I just wanted Tanking. it, you know, like, I just want to see him keep, keep, like, stay strong, believe in yourself, you know, like, who cares what people are saying? Nautilus, here. That's true. Um, yeah, but not the case. A little, something a little tankier in lane. Also, the Zeri Leona does feel like something that could be abused. I, I wanted to see, like, maybe you go some sort of range support to try and uh, harass the Zeri, who's taken a number of nerfs over time, gotten a lot weaker in the lane phase. Leona also um, does have kill threat, but otherwise doesn't have a way to answer a lot of range matchups. Instead, they go for the support the engage with the Alistar. Makes sense given that uh, Ferret will probably want to go something a little bit scrappier. He does favor the carry champions quite a bit. Well, Graves banned away, continuing to take junglers off the table. In fact, neither team has picked the jungle, so Diana gonna get banned on the other side. Again, trying to keep potential AP picks out of the jungle. Silas being banned screams that we want to pick Twisted Fate out of this space to me, but we'll see what the plan is for the Wildcats. Yeah, I, I agree that it's kind of telegraphed. We'll see if Red picked this up. I think they were intelligent about picking up the uh, Galio in the previous game, even though they ended up losing that one. You know, it was the right idea that TF Ooh. got through. Echo, interestingly. Uh, maybe the thing is that with TF, it's not that much AP, um, and you want to stop them from finding other AP avenues, given that you already have Trinomir and Jin locked in. And so they're saying, if you take TF, fair enough, that's going to advance your game plan. But also, then you have almost no magic damage with the jungle pool pinched as it is and with the Silas gone and all these other things. So uh, very interesting to see that. We'll have to see how they actually adapt that. It's the Viego getting locked in for Ferret, one of his most played champions. Curious to see what Saren lines up here though. I guess we'll find out in a moment. As we're really gonna have to finish off this draft. Looking for a jungle up. Still plenty available here for Aegis. <laughs> Definitely felt like Red was in one of those positions where like, you don't want to ban anything too important because like we might want that. Yeah, clock is running down too. I don't know if uh, it's a like pocket pick potentially for Saren, uh, as though he's going to get picked up here for Grefta. But uh, I mean, Echo is definitely a respectable ban, especially if Saren does have plays on the champion. Uh, what is the answer though? Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? This would be a spicy one. Now this is a Zoe counter. If you're really trying to put her in the dumpster, it takes a bit, but this is brutal if you can get ahead. To see if it's risky though. I don't know if you want to play this. I don't think they do. I think they will. Ow! Baited! We both got baited! So boring! Come on, man! Oh, uh, Alright, so it does answer a little bit about the push and pull that was going on between snowballing the Trindomir with global pressure and Okay, we have too much physical damage. We need a magic threat. I think the decision to go more 4-1 oriented combining with the Victor makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a team comp that ah, it's a little all over the place because Alistar and Viego both kind of need to go in. Jin and Victor are very happy to sit back. You want to kind of go for zone control while Trinomir split pushes. Yep. Um, but I think the decision to go 4-1, given the concern about the damage spread still makes sense to me. For Red, uh, they just got strong champs. It's one of those like, hey, everyone's kind of good at everything. Gwen yep. can team fight, Gwen can split. Zeri can run all over the map. She can also just team fight. You know, like they, they just are, have a, a strong team comp with a lot of playmaking tools in it. And it makes sense, right? Want some comfort here for both these teams because we said at the top of this segment, it is do or die for uh, the Wildcats. But if you look closely and do a bit of math, both teams have the same scoreline. So it's do or die for both teams. If you lose here, you cannot make it to the Rumble stage. Yeah, I believe four is yeah. a kind of magic number with four losses. I think you can also project a little bit ahead yeah. and say that RNG is going to keep winning. They're probably not going to stop at three and three. Um, so you're kind of hoping to most likely catch uh, PSG will be the team at three and three. Yep. So that's why you're expecting the two teams to get out of groups will need at least three wins. With four losses, you can't get there. Yep. So uh, it is a very important moment in the rivalry between these two teams. Not only are they want to keep the total international record close, because it is relatively close. Three games is not a big lead, but you want to make sure that you continue your run through this tournament. You must win here to continue. It is going to be a long road regardless, but it'll be a real nice cherry on top of beating your longtime international rivals if you also get to keep playing for a potential berth into the Rumble stage. Yeah, might be able to stay alive through the rest of the day. 
Uh, not going to be easy. Not going to be easy, but the fact of the matter is there is uh, not going to end this group today, despite this being the point of it with the, the situation that happened. Yep. Having to throw out some of those games for competitive integrity reasons, replay them. Uh, that means that this will probably be resolved, I believe, tomorrow, but uh, we'll wait for official wording. And until then, uh, you can stay alive for another day. Enjoy your time in Korea. Scrim some more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> More cowbell, baby. <laughs> you okay. know what? If I'm just trying to reset off the last game, this is actually beautiful. That's how he's resetting. Yep. I will say, there's not been a ton of level ones. There has been a lot of um, kind of like rush somewhere with five, and maybe they'll face check you. Yep. But there hasn't been a ton of like real, like we're hunting for kills. We got some tricks set up. And that is one of the things that maybe is partially Nautilus's underperformance. Um, at least in North America, when teams locked in Nautilus, you knew they were going to do some shenanigans level one yep. because the hook flash combination is just disgusting. You pretty much always go flash for flash on a mid laner, which then sets up a more volatile early game. And it feels like we have actually been relatively tepid in, in the first couple minutes of the game where people are not going for level two ganks even, you know, like the J4 red to mid kind of cheese that you, you see. It actually feels like teams have not prioritize that very highly. And I would have expected to see more, especially in this part where the, the team's pools are so disparate. Yep, that was one of my favorite level ones from the tournament, just so we're clear. Perfect. Making it happen with the emotes. <laughs> also, I believe uh, Nautilus is responsible for the world record first blood time, the fastest first oh. blood ever. I believe yes, I, he's I, responsible. I, th I think that's one of the few world records we, we hold in Correct. North America. Correct, that is one of the few North American legal it's also world records. nearly impossible to get shorter than, considering if yes. people are unaware, it was a Nautilus blitz down mid lane with a flash hook. You have the home guard boots speeding you up there, instantly killing someone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard to get a faster one. Yes, um, we'll hold that one. Yep. I, I'll also say Nautilus is probably responsible for one of the bloodiest games, I believe it's the bloodiest game ever at international play. It was 24 or 24 kills yep, at 17 24. minutes or 14 minutes? 14. 24 at 14. 24 kills at 14. I believe in Nautilus was in that yep. game. We tend to snapshot games at 8 and 14 minutes these days because of the changes to objectives. Uh, mainly Rift Herald. So uh, we'll see. You know what? We could break it. There's still plenty of games left. There's more RNG games to play. Grepta with a Paralysis quality picked up off the ground. A little bit of an evade here. Feels pretty bad for Ferret. Ooh. And that bubble is just going to miss Ferret with a very nice little slide away. A little scary there, but gets away. Nice control by Red. You have Zoe, who gets the push early on, trying to combo that with their jungle control. Lee Sin staying aggressive. Might be a little deep, though. Smite from Aegis, I believe. No, it was... Ooh, now I'm confused. I think they both have two smite judges. I think Aegis got it. I saw some gold pop up, and yeah. if that is the case, it's bad news best for Ferret, who's going to lose most of his cancer to Lee Sin. Yeah, still gets a couple of the little guys on the way out, and a uh, nice move there by Guigo. Getting the push in the top side, able to collapse there, make sure that was a safe invade. Now, he just gets to fall back. This is the entire uh, clear done for Ferret, whereas Lee Sin can drop back, grab Skull Crab, grab his top side camps, and actually end up ahead of CS by the end of the clear. And then you also have your camps respawning. So, uh, a nice little path there by Aegis. Cute bit of poke there from Titan as well. Looks like Holy Phoenix just trying to keep the wave in a decent spot. Alstar's laning when he's not all inning you. Not that fun, as it turns out. I don't know, man. Standing there while minions die and building up your heal. <laughs> Very menacing. I, I, ideal gameplay. It's, uh, it's uh, like I said, a different lane phase than I thought they were going to go. I thought I was wondering with the Jin into, into Zarya if that wanted to be more aggressive. Not the case. And so with the jungler showing on the top side, Titan and Jojo can play a little bit more aggressive, get that push in a little bit. But it's something that they have to be careful of because they didn't actually get the, the wave all the way in. So you see a good ward there in River to make sure that Ferret cannot get in there, especially Mark Ping going down right on top of him, spotting him out, knowing that uh, they do need to be a little bit careful now that the first clears are done for the junglers. Curious to see what happens in top side as well. We did see, of course, Jax in the last game. As an option, Bin did really well in the lane early on, but I feel like it stabilized uh, eventually, and then we just kind of had, you know, Jax and Gwen doing regular mid-game things. I think this matchup is probably going to be pretty similar. I don't think you're picking Trindamir to, like, run over someone in a 1v1. But I think eventually the hope is that Trindamir could outsplit push Gwen. Will that actually happen? I don't know. Because Gwen's very powerful. Yeah, Gwen feels like one of the picks that we'll have to see if she ends up on the ban list a yeah. little bit more as it continues to go. People are going to try a lot of answers. You're going to see a lot of like, let me outskill her. Let me try this stuff. But uh, one of the things that makes champions so good in pro play is how consistently they can do what they want to do. That the volatility of Gwen is actually not that high um, because of the things like her immune 
and always having a bit of zone control, kind of always having backline threat, even if things don't go great. Your items are a little expensive, but should you reach them, you're going to be relevant no matter what. You're also not bad hitting front line even yep. uh, with just the true damage and stuff like that. Like she, she's just kind of like everything's a target for her. Very nice setup here for Grevtha. Nice gravity field placement does get the stun. Aegis up here as well though, looking for the Q, trying to find it. Saren trapped. Good flash, but he had to burn it there. Yeah, had to burn the flash. That's continuing that kind of mid jungle aggression that we we're talking about. Zoe Lee Sin is is secretly a very annoying mid jungle two v two. It's not quite LeBlanc Lee Sin levels or Ari Lee Sin where the setups that easy. Um, but you still have skill shots. You still have a lot of prio into control mages early for the Zoe to go out and start roaming around, landing sleeps through walls against junglers. It's more about abusing the map that yep. you get from mid priority more than like assassinating a mid laner over and over again. Just like this. Once again, we invade the enemy Krugs. Jojo's here, Zoe's roaming up. Farfetch on the long wraparound, but Saren's basically trapped. Waves pushed in, can't safely move through the fog. So Reddy gonna have all this control. In fact, Gwen's even just straight pushing the tower. Took a plate there as well. There's gonna be no dive. Wildcats do fend that off, but great topside pressure there for Red. Invading the enemy jungle nice and early. Yeah, continuing this game plan of aggression in the jungle. Good decision not to try and dive star screen there. That would be a disaster given that he hit level six already. Um, and you're just kind of wasting any time. This is one of the other advantages of this is it's allowing Zeri to scale up. It is one of the concerns that she has right now being a little weak in the early game. But if you put all the pressure on the enemy jungler, he cannot make a gank happen. The lane itself, not super difficult. And by controlling Wildcats, Red is able to give themselves the ability to kind of scale up in both their lanes. All right, catch it maybe for fair. Aegis. Not that tanky. Jojo, they're going to lock one down. Q lands, Ferret flashes. But Aegis does not want to continue. Grab though, they're roaming up. He has an ignite off the ground. They're going to uh -oh. go for it. He goes over the wall, still asleep. And now the damage is coming through, and that is first blood for the Red Kinids. There you I'm go. the blue as well. Oh, it makes it feel even worse. Grethar and Aegis comboing together, popping off, controlling both sides of the jungle, stealing the blue away, finding first blood. Forcing flashes. This is the mid jungle show right now. And there's level six as well for the Lee Sin off the back of the blue and the grump that he took away from Ferret's jungle as well. Again, you said already, Mark, it is not so much about the lane setup, it is about the jungle setup. Yeah, here you'll see again just a little bit unsafe with the path there, thinking that he can get to the blast cone and be safe, but Farfetch gets stunned up right before then. Not six yet, actually, relatively squishy. They finish him off. Now you can start picking up flashes. Graph are able to grab that one. No one else to actually kill with it, but it's always the best part about playing Zoe at the end of a fight when there's like six flashes on the ground. Yep. You start spamming them. Feels good. You know what? Just press the button. Makes you pasta. Feels fun, even if you don't get any kills. That's probably one of the, the secretly strongest parts about... Oh, it's both Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the randomness of the things, oh, that's all fun, but the, yeah. just the move speed that you get in lane phase is actually really important for making yeah. her feel so safe and hard to gank because if you start showing to make a move on her. If you're not instantly on top of her, she can easily just pop one of her summoners and, and get away very easily. Yep. Or one of your summoners, depending or, on... Yep, <laughs> depending or on a random happens. one she picked up. Yep. Yeah, like this XD might. so random. <laughs> Barret, gonna get bubbled? Yeah, beautiful. Asleep we go. This looks like a kill on my screen. You see to land the Q, it's so easy. No execute even needed for Aegis. Man, Grephthar does not have a kill yet, but he is the star of the show for me. He's looking real good on this Zoe. Comboing with Aegis as well. I mean, this is just a, what probably feels like a really good game for them after coming off that RNG loss where it started kind of close before ending with a dancing Shelly. That's got to feel bad. So to mentally reset and instantly start controlling the Wildcats thus far is, is very impressive. And I think speaks to the win that they had over PSG not being a fluke. Yes. That was nearly a perfect game. It was a killless or deathless game, I should say. Uh, a no-hitter of some sense. but. The fact that it was not just like, oh, PSG didn't show up. I think that's what the story became after they lost the Wildcats right. before. But now they're showing it's not a fluke. Very nice. Look, look who's coming, by the way. Lee Sin is beelining to the top half of the roof. Starscreen knows. He's like, I'm going as far back as possible. <laughs> and unfortunately, that means that it's just free time for the plates here for the Gwen. Yeah, and there's the Rift Herald. Not given any time to scale up for the Trindamir and a number of nerfs that came through recently making it a little bit more difficult. You actually have to put points in your ultimate if you want that ability back up. So getting a force here is a big deal. They changed the cooldown because before it was a 1.1 durability. You threw one in and continued to max your actual damage and your utility one as well as the fact that the cooldown reduction uh, that you get from your spinning slash coming back up faster was changed from one second to 0.75. So a number of nerfs pushed 
Trinomir out of the meta, and it looks like he's struggling right now. Yeah, loses the tower there off the back of that Herald drop. Gwen picks up all the plates in that uh, little exchange. So really nice pressure, doesn't get the kill, but converts for the tower in the first tower gold at that. It is almost, it's approaching 4,000 gold ahead for the Red Canids, which is a very impressive early game. To your point, I agree, not only bouncing back, but after they win versus PSG, PSG it was like, okay, Red Canids are there. They might be the second best team in the group. And they lost to this team. Wildcats had a great looking game off against Red Canids. So has to feel good to have a nice advantage here. Yeah, I mean, what we're talking about, you know, there's still an outside chance that you can find your way in there. Uh, it, it's not going to be easy, but if you can crawl, claw up to three and three, you get a rematch versus uh, PSG. Maybe you can make it happen. We'll have to see it. They do make some big mistakes, I think is the, the concern for, for Red, where they have clean early games. They seem to have a good grasp of what their comp's going to do and how to execute it and these kinds of things, and then uh, some fight doesn't go their way. I think that's what PSG was able to show. I think it was against them uh, earlier today when they evened out the the head-to-head. -head was It was close, it was back and forth, and then it was like this insane team fight from PSG at a, at a Dragon, and that's where we've seen the biggest discrepancy is here's how we're going to vision control and actually pincer or flank or set up your team fights. All right, well, if we can keep isolated skirmishes, keep the Zoe Lee Sin staple together, keep the Gwen rolling, it's going to feel good. Working out so far here as Jojo is looking to investigate perhaps this dragon. It's been very lonely for the poor Hex dragon. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see Red not try to grab that. Zoe has had the push for a, a portion of this game. He would have expected it. Um, so it's going to go over free to... For Wildcats, not the end of the world, just a single dragon for red. Obviously, they don't have too much priority on it, but it seemed like there might have been a window or two to, to grab it, but they're much more focused on snowballing Guigo and controlling the Viego. Still battling here, but Starscreen just going to flick away as we'll take a look at the bottom side. It hasn't been a lot about it in this particular game, but this is our Mercedes Benz feature matchup, and this is the big one, right? Holy Phoenix is just getting bullied as far as things go as Gwen is getting aggressive there. Starscreen in trouble, has to burn the ulti. Is it going to run out in time? We'll find out in just a moment. He's going to go down. The Ignite should be good enough. And that is going to be it. We go with the solo kill. Hold on, Farfetch, we can play the bot side. All right, Trouble in Paradise here in the bottom half of the Rift is Wildcats trying to make something happen, but the stun lands in. Beautiful steal for Aegis, gets his third kill. And that shit down is starting to pop up. He was ignored in the early stages, but Zeri always finds a way in the fights. Perfect timing to bring up that feature matchup. Chitan getting involved with the rest of the team now. Farfetch. Oh no, feels bad, man. Aegis make it four on the day. Only one assist. It's bloodthirsty lease in today. Yeah, it's still the mid jungle 2v2 popping off, but other people getting involved now. The solo kill on the top side. Chitan with nice flash in there, getting that damage thrown down. Kind of chunking out Holy Fix. Phoenix before that fight too. Holy Phoenix, it feels like gets so much attention sometimes, just never given the opportunity and to get off the ground. He's a great Jin player. Yeah. But if you're trying to funnel gold into an AD and have them carry mid to late, Jin is not that pick, right? No. And it's just all this attention in draft that he received. Uh -oh. He's like, I guess I played this good champion, but I'm in trouble. There's a level nine Lee Sin trying to execute me, and he's gonna be successful. Farfetch can't find the defense. Age is popping off. Man, he's feeling himself camping between turrets instead of recalling, waiting for the Lee Sin, or excuse me, the the uh, Jin to come back. That is straight up solo queue treatment. I think everyone who's jungled and has done this one before where you just wait for the laner to walk back through lane in between two turrets, you kill him again, you tilt the hell out of him, you throw some emotes in his face, you go back to counter jungling. <laughs> Ooh, 1v2 is brewing. Jojo roaming up. Grepto here is off. Farfetch with the interference. Saren going to try and collect his potential kill. Grepto going to have to run away. Does not have flash, but Aegis is going to make it a big problem. Ulti not enough for the Alistar. Make it one more as Grepto picks it up, and Aegis was still going. Missing the resonating strike onto Saren as we do have a kill again. Gwen takes down Trend. Gwen popping off the 2v1. Finds the kill. That is one of the areas where that nerf comes in. It was a 90 seconds to 130 second cooldown. Starscreen just barely didn't have his ultimate up there. They actually scrapped that one out. Ends up going down. Great bubble. If he had died somehow from that angle, I think it's like you just, your mouse and keyboard is due. 95% of the last two minutes in the death chamber. Yeah. <laughs> Something insane. Bad time island. Uh, I mean, the entire game is bad time island for, for Wildcats. <laughs> this is uh, looking pretty rough. I mean, 9,000 gold ahead or so at 15 minutes 
is a pretty ridiculous early game. I don't have all the numbers for, you know, what's the most one-sided game we've had gold-wise, but this is going to be up there, I have to think. Yeah, you'll see it again. Just uh, staying in the Shroud. The important part about that, too, is it does give actual resist while you're in there, too. So it does make it very easy or easier to sit in there and scrap things out. Barrett's just not able to get any damage. And then here's the ultimate not quite up. Hold on. Don't have time. Aegis is trying to kill people again <laughs> alongside Grepta here. 2v2. Level 8 Viego. Grepta portal jump. Went away around the beautiful oh. sleep on the Zarin. They're so good. The 2v2. It's been domination from the Red Kennedys as Grepta takes out Ferret again. Ferret just can't find the kill. He flash back in, but just barely staying alive. Oh my god. That 2v2 was clean. Age is breaking some ankles. Looks like he's going in, baits out the the field to try and get the stun, but then he goes back out. That's where the ultimate no. gets dropped, and then he goes back in. Star screen. I saw him happen, start buddy. and I was like, I like the attempt, right? But it's not even gonna get that. Sniffed out there by the Red Canids, and it could be another 1v1 kill. Grab the look at the Holy Phoenix! Finds it there with the Loot and Zeri oh. combo, and it's another kill onto Star Screen. This is getting brutal pastry. Yeah. I don't know if we gotta turn this off. NC17 rating coming in. This is painful to watch. Wildcats getting brutalized all over the map, every lane, deaths across oh, the board. Oh, come on, man! Kill him. Do come it. Come on, man! Do Gale it. for Zoe! It's so gross! It's so gross! Grapthar finds another! Oh my god, just... Wildcats catching L's across the board. The only thing, again, saving this from a perfect game is the one dragon that they have been able to get. And uh, the second Herald's gonna go over. I saw Chitun's player cam, by the way. He has a very big smile on his face. This is a game that's hard. Like, I dare you not to smile playing this game. Yeah. I dare you to look upset as you're crushing your regional or your inter-regional rivals, I should say. Just such an easy chase down sequence. Uh, here at this point just caught out in the river Gwen not a ton of CC but enough slows to make that happen Obviously Wildcats are just losing track of members on the map No idea that Zoe's gonna be there on the side of the wall Grefthar finds that easy pick off and then Ferret here just I don't like at this point It's like you're just tilted like yeah. why are you underneath that turret? You can't stop it from dropping There's literally no play for you to make there, but you also can't go to any camps So it's like just stay in your base and so I can understand why that feels bad. I don't want to flame Ferret, but also you got to just stop making these kind of mistakes. The game is definitely away from them. Uh, remember that tweet with Licorice where it's like, this is what a major yes! region versus a minor region is supposed to look like, huh? Weirdly enough, it applies to this game. Like, that's how good Red looks right now. Like, this looks like pool one seed RNG going up against anyone else in the tournament. You know, it's crazy how dominant they are right yeah, now. Yeah, nameplates off, you would struggle to name these teams, I think. If we didn't have them right on your screen, the Red are going off as far as trying to make it happen, but the level 8 alley, even with the ulti, just cannot survive. Aegis godlike in this game. The owner all barely whiffing on the Sarsi McGrath. They're still going! How does he land the bubble every time? Sarsi going to be forced to burn the ulti. Aegis is still going in. He gives a thousand gold to the enemy Trindamir, and he just doesn't care. Rides the Trindamir in for the Lee Sin kick, does drop for it, kind of baits his team into getting a little bit low. Kind of gives the only kill of the game over. Big shutdown, like you said. And does he care? No. Should he care? No. <laughs> Why should you care? That was sick. You take the Q onto the Trinomir to get the flash kick onto the enemy uh, carry. I mean, it feels good. He feels bad. That's all that matters. Ignore the gold. 14 Matthias Texas is off of Griffith, So there is strategic advantages yeah he's funneling to sending it exactly the zoe helped the lee sin get this fed and uh, now he's returning the favor it's called teamwork that's true. oh look yeah. it up beautiful teamwork <laughs> from the red kids this game and it has honestly jokes aside really been this mid jungle that's opened up this game such a beautiful game of plays from these two as we watch this one again i mean look level eight alley with ulti no nah. You're not gonna live. I mean, there's just also no way that this play works. They were cut off in the choke point, the damage dealer, so it was gonna be a 2v2, of, or 2v4, I guess, the star screen and, and Alistar. So it's never gonna work there, even if the, the combo did work. Uh, and that's just gonna lead to a bit of a chase down here. Aegis riding that in to get behind Saren for the kickback. Ends up getting dropped, but, you know, we'll take him. Get some assists for your team, get some stacks, get mm -hmm. some more gold. <laughs> and he knows, he's like, oh, am I gonna be the only death this game, man? Is this gonna be me? It's all right, man. You, you had a great game. Yeah. You've been super clean. Shrug it off. Shrug it off. Don't worry. Trinimir got 1,000 gold. It's going to be fine. If Trinimir had a, if died before waking up, by the way, would have had a chance to ulti. Unfortunately, Lee Sin Q didn't do quite enough damage, yep. despite how bad Aegis is. 
But, you know, we'll be fine. We got a dragon. For Reckon is, we have uh, more face checking. Chitan's just over the top. Pumps the ulti, ready to go. Jojo gonna go down as well. The kills are coming forward. Possessed Leon is pretty good. Ferret's going for it. He knows that he has to find the angle. Chitan low, but not dead. And here comes Gwen. Not too bad, actually, for Wildcats, though. The face check. I think Red thought that they could just kill them, but Starscreen did a great job focusing Chitan down and forcing him out of the fight while he doesn't kill him. Uh, it does force the flash out as well as a retreat. Wiggle, though, is still terrifying. We're just going for it. He just walked through Victor W. Oh, Hex Flash. Hello, Farfetch. Egg is like, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm trying to give you to the enemy nice team interrupt. again. Once again, the Starscreen bubble's going to miss. Good spin around, but it doesn't matter. Starscreen, no ulti. And that play, ill advised, goes the way the Red Kin is. As more face checking is happening, Gwen is immune. Oh, goodness. He really going to get out of this? Body block here for Aegis. The last bullet's not going to quite curve around. Oh, my God. And Gwen gets away. Gwen is a great. Oh, there we go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go, Holy Phoenix. Gwen is immune. <laughs> that work? The... Yeah, I'm here for it. I don't know what immune, like immune, but I am sounds like a. You know. So I know you can be overwhelmed. Right. I know you can be underwhelmed. So but can you ever just be whelmed? I actually looked that up. I think you can in Europe. <laughs> yeah, whelmed is actually a word. Yeah. I, I looked it up. It's actually very similar to overwhelmed. Anytime that you're whelmed, you're also kind of overwhelmed. But it's not quite as intense. It's not quite as intense. But like, if you, you could be whelmed at work. So if, if the gold lead was 50% in this game, yeah, it'd be a whelming gold lead instead of an overwhelming gold lead. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, now yeah. it's an overwhelming this gold lead. This is an lead. overwhelming gold lead. And I think to your point, I think, yeah, we can, you can be mute. Holy Phoenix with the kill there does get some gold back. Again, anything they can grab is good for them. But you have to think Red Canids are going to start cleaning it up a little bit. I mean, I will say that little pick that they got into Gwen, even if they didn't kill her, that stopped a bit. I thought for sure that was, oh, those two are dead. Now it's going to be time for Baron. That little heads up play there by them finding the pick onto Gwen uh, was pretty big for stemming the bleeding. I'm not going to say that there's Wildcats have a chance getting back in this game because it's like a 99.99% chance that they're out uh, with 11,000 gold lead or red. But that was a good play. Twas. But red are going to finally get themselves onto the Baron. It is an impossible choice for the Wildcats, but one they must make, especially face checking Zoe and Fog is like. Feels bad, man. It feels really bad, man. And look at Grepta again, running a bit of interference, trying to be. Defensive Starscream with a decent flank, actually. Alstar going to go to oh. bed, but Chitsound with the wraparound flank. Able to just hold two on the Baron. Grepta trying to find the angle. Starscream pop the ult a little bit early. As Chitsound rides away to safety. Seren, though, does take out Jojo, so Ferret's going to get a possession. And Red a little low, actually. Yeah, again, Starscream on the Trinomere, despite not finding a kill there. Kept two to three members busy. Guigo needed Aegis to sit on top of him, provide some shields, threaten to kick out and stuff like that to make sure that Gwen didn't die. And during that time, that means, again, when Chitan goes in, there's no one else helping him. He almost always 80% someone right away, and there's no one to kind of push that damage over the edge. So while he doesn't end up dying, it does lead to this kind of split fight while also having the Baron aggroed on top of them that uh, leads to Wildcats. First off, stopping the Baron, finding a kill, and finding their first turret of the game with a fat objective bounty shutdown. It's now under 10k. Yep. That's good. Positive direction, positive movement here. Yeah, so the Wildcats. Look again, JoJo and Chitan are like, let's blow up Holy Phoenix. But Leona didn't actually get any of the CC or damage to kind of 100 to 0 him. And then during that time, that allows a turn for the Wildcats to find JoJo. And then you see Starscreen again, even though he's not killing anyone. In a lot of these situations, he's doing good work. He's putting threat down despite being super far behind. Ooh, Flash is a little bit short for Saren, and that should be enough for the dive. Egg is actually Ooh. straight up solo killed right there. Managed to find the enemy mid laner as the jungler. Able to dodge out on Holy Phoenix's route as well. Might have led to a situation where they could have got CC'd up. And I think this is funny by Red. They're like, why are we going to Baron? Yeah. We can just keep taking turrets. There's other turrets up. Starscreen during this time recognizes, hey, I'm just going to split push. And here comes Gwen once again. Ferret's going to be forced away, but this inhibitor tower is going to be broken. The inhib should follow shortly. Chitan already working on the midsection of the map as the Wildcats are gonna lose a lot here. Two in hips, most likely one already dead. Gonna have to fight Farfetch looking to try and start things off here. But don't have the mid laner for two seconds. I'm gonna get them back and the mid in hip is gonna be alive. Chitan wants to finish it off. I like this play. Extending for a little bit there to make sure it happens and Red do successfully take both. Red grab two inhibitors, gonna back off now. 
Doesn't oh. look like the Wildcats want to let them go safely, but it's kind of hard to make a play happen. And with the two inhibitors down now, it's probably going to be the easy bear in time. Grab this dragon as well before you do your full reset. And then off of that, be able to grab the Baron. Going a little clean and clinical now. They, I think, understandably, were like, all right, we made a couple mistakes. Let's let's make sure we actually pull this one out cleanly. I think also just taking this gold away from the Wildcats is good, right? Mm -hmm. That's five minutes where they can't get the objective bounty potentially off that dragon. Don't want to give any extra gold over. At this point, we are not getting to Sol if Red Canids are going to win this game, most likely. So they're just happy to take the gold away. They'll take a little bit of the buff from the ocean, but it is more about taking it off the map so that you can fully focus on finishing this game, getting the Baron, pressuring the top side, and then closing it out nice and cleanly. Yeah, well, I like that Wildcats aren't going quietly, though. Sneaking into the bot lane, hoping someone shows up there. Saren, as a victor, not the best assist tool, given that there's no hard lockdown CC right away should someone face check them, but can jump out the damage with the Trinomir and try and blow somebody up. Star screen continuing to get gold. We'll get more here again. Plenty of bounties to collect. A bit of extra gold there as Star Screen claims that one. But Deep Vision now being set up for red, and this is nice. I like starting the Baron with only two. There is warded. They are going to turn the ward off now, though. But I don't know if Wildcats can even do anything, is the problem. Like, you know what they're doing, but I don't think you can really safely face check as Ferret's trying to find a little bit of a wrap around there in the mist. Yeah, they're starting to go, though. There's a slow. Ferret going to have to buff her out of there with the ulti. Jojo flashing out of the way. Saren solo kill for the enemy AD as Jojo's there. Finds his teammates, so with the Zenith played back on the far fetch. And Red have found two kills already, and they may not need the Baron to finish off this game. Yeah, Chitan just ganked Saren somewhere off screen, found that solo kill. Farfetch as well, trying to go in and, and think that the Leon is alone. It is true, but it's not that hard for the Red me cam uh, members to turn off the Baron. So, Gwen! Lee in over the wall, get those kills. Now gonna grab their third inhibitor. Can probably just sit on them and end the game. Take this without ever actually getting the Baron buff on their side uh, in this victory. Vegas again looking. Doesn't quite find the angle, but plenty of damage deals onto the tower. Holy Phoenix popping the ulti. Grepto was like, that looks like a sweep angle to me. Barely gonna find the sleep on the other side, but Holy Phoenix gonna cleanse out safely. Star Screen tag does have ulti back to the fountain. He goes as the second Nexus Tower is gonna go down, but. Stumble Wildcats gonna keep on fighting for man pole that a far fetch damage dropped there by Saren, but Chitan's on a rampage. Gwen's gonna start frontlining, Ferret's gonna get a reset, but uh -oh. I'm not sure it matters. Maybe though the Wildcats can keep their game alive for a little bit longer. Two kills now for the Viego. Now the Gwen's on the enemy team. As Ferret is gonna die to Grepta at the end of it all. And the Red Canids are gonna keep their tournament hopes alive as the Wildcats are fighting to stay in this game. But I think. The clock has finally counted down to zero. The Wildcats are going to move away. Chitan's going to stylishly flip over the enemy Nexus and finish it up once and for all. No, he's holy dead. Phoenix. Minions I mean, he's a 2v1. He just can't do anything. Yeah, I think this is actually going to be a defense here. The minions stopping the double super creeps from getting on top of the Nexus. I thought for sure the minions were just going to end the game. Yeah. They might still do it. There's a teleport up for Grefthar Look at him go. 20. He just might just try and sit on top of them. Force of the alley ult. Got to navigate. Jin stun. Not that tanky for the lead. Does have a stopwatch, but doesn't want to burn it here. And the minions, oh goodness, they're doing it. The minions, all right, they've been stopped. Aegis is like, wait a second. If they're there, I can keep going. Leona's they running up from mid. The teleport for Grefthar up now. Okay. It's tempting. I know it is, guys. Okay. Wildcats hold. A tough hold. Supers everywhere. Triple in hips. I mean, it's gonna. They're playing horde mode. Like this is a. This is different it's League a, of Legends. It's a turret defense game now. Yeah. It's balloons. We've gone all the way there. <laughs> oh, it feels like one of those old used map settings, you know? <laughs> when, when you're playing like where League of Legends came from with Dota and all that of those. Yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, just make sure that the turret doesn't fall. Don't have much gold to put up defenses, though, but they are going to try and stop red. Baron's still an option, of course, here. Uh, the Wildcats will be contained to their base, but red aren't interested in that objective. They just want to win one last fight here. That's all they need. Hex Splash looking, finds him just barely on the edge of the pole. And now Gwen in trouble, pops the W, that's so much damage though! But the least in fights Holy Phoenix in the midst of the team fight! A 
And that is going to be all she wrote. Two kills for ages. Three kills, in fact. And that pole is going to spell the end. It looks pretty, but it was not enough at the end of the day as the Red Canids will keep themselves in MSI. Red Canids are alive off the back of that one and look incredible doing it. Super clean through the first 20 minutes of the game. A couple little slip-ups around the Baron, but then they say, you know what? Forget that. We're just going to end through inhibitors and minion pressure. They go ahead and do that. And they are still fighting, still dreaming, still alive. And we'll still see the Wildcats, of course, but their ability to qualify for the Rumble stage, unfortunately, is now not a thing with the win here. As Brazil get the score line a little bit closer to even all time for these two rivals. Yeah, should be another game versus RNG available. Um, potentially, you're looking at some insane world where they can play upset. So for Wildcats, they're not done yet. Still have some work to do. Uh, a very disappointing game, I think, for them. Not just losing, but losing in that fashion, kind of getting styled on as it was going on. They did go out on their terms, picking that last fight, trying to blow up the Gwen. Was it? It almost happened, but the immunity stopping victor damage was yeah. kind of a big thing. And it, of course, like the gold difference still at that point of the game. Like, yeah. We got late. It was and trending think, down. Yes, but still very big yeah. as far as overall difference goes. Not enough time to really push it to a point where that game was going to feel close as far as gold goes. So. A tough loss for sure for the Wildcats. We'll see them again as the Red Canids still in it. And again, the games they've won look, I mean, honestly, even some of their losses, like when they win, they win big. Yeah, they have a really good early game. Unironically, un no matter who they're playing against, their early game looks decent. I, you saw they were forcing RNG to respect them and not just take their fights at Rift Heralds or whatnot uh, against PSG earlier in the day while they did lose that one. As we see, uh, Chitan. Chitan throwing yeah. out a little bit of a, uh, some vibes from Evie a little bit. You little know? Playing to the camera. As the mask on, kind of like, you know, can't show the big grin that I'm sure is under that mask. Yeah. Uh, he was having a great time. And honestly, like, despite the matchup we thought was going to be the big influence in this game, right? Chitan yeah. versus Holy Phoenix. Chitan was just vibing. Just they, playing they, ban they banned out Holy Phoenix. They both, like, kind of were like, we're going to scale and play for team. And then they just watched as their team's got massive leads for Chitan. All right, well, with that, Red can it stay alive at MSI 2022, while the Wildcats, unfortunately, are eliminated from Rumble stage contention. After the break, though, we'll break down this do-or-die game. Stay tuned. Behind 14 epic days of epicness. Behind 61 million hours of dropped jaws. Behind every match, every broadcast, every zero ping moment at League of Legends MSI 2022 is the network capable of making it all happen. The Cisco Network, aka The Realm. Cisco, powering the future of esports. The world is watching. Get on board. Check the lanes. Pay attention to the best. Join the ranks. Be the challenger. All in for the trophy. This is for all senses. This is for all players. Buckle up. Take notes. MSI 2022. Driven. 